Morning, everybody. You like my new jumper? Yes? No? This is kind of a breakout jumper. So I'm moving on from blue. I've gone to green. What do you think? You should see my socks. <clears throat> there are at least three different colors in my socks. It's unbelievable. Joseph's Technicolor dream coat. My socks, they are. Could you turn up, please? Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20. We're looking at the Ten Commandments at the moment. We've got to commandment number eight. But chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. It's on page 77. We'll get to Luke a little bit later. Let me say a prayer. Ask God for his help as we come to his word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you speak. We pray, Lord, for us now as we uh, listen. Pray that you would, God the Holy Spirit, work in our hearts, convicting us of sin, convincing us of truth. As you shine a spotlight on our hearts, we pray that you would cause us to be receptive and flee to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to start this morning with two really, really important introductory points. Um, the first is this. The first is this. The context of the Ten Commandments is grace. Does that sound a little bit ho-hum? It's really important. And if you haven't kind of grasped what, I'm, what I've just said, I hope you might. The context of the Ten Commandments is great. I want you to have a look at verses 1 and 2 of Exodus 20. It goes like this. And God spoke all these, the, these words. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So God says to people whom he has brought out of slavery, whom he has called to himself, he says to them, I am, I am your God. It could have said, I am the Lord God, but he doesn't. He says, I am the Lord your God. That is, I have rescued you. You are my rescued people. I have called you. I have brought you to myself. Now, as my rescued people, in response to that great rescue, you must serve no other gods but me. You must not make yourself an image which you bow down and worship. You must not misuse my name. You must um, remember the Sabbath. You must honor your father and mother, not murder, not commit adultery, not steal, and so on and so forth. So in response, in response to, to me calling you to myself, you respond in, in, in these ways. That is, do you get this? It's so important. Keeping the commandments doesn't save us. Keeping the law doesn't set us right with God. That is not the thing that we need to do to make us right with God. Um, it is a response to salvation. Always. Uh, keeping God's law, keeping God's commandments is a response to what he has done for, for, for me. So that's the first thing to say. The context of the Ten Commandments is grace. But see if you can go with with this with me. The next thing is the Ten Commandments lead us to grace. So the context is grace. God is speaking to his, his, his rescued people, and then they lead us to grace. And here is why. Because what the Ten Commandments do, firstly, is they expose us, especially as they picked up and applied by, by, by the Lord, Lord Jesus. And so if you've got commandment one in front of you, verse three it is in, in, in chapter 20, uh, it says, you shall have no other gods before me. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. And I don't know how you respond to that, but I tell you the way to respond to that is to go, oh my, oh my, I am constantly doing that. I am constantly putting other things before the Lord God. Somebody came when we had this commandment, when we preached this commandment, well, I, preached, I, I did it, and came to me afterwards and said, and said this. This person said, I don't want to share God. I, I don't want to do that. You know, thank you for that talk. I just, I 
just want to be for him. I don't want to share him with, with others. And that's absolutely the, absolutely the right response. But that person would know, and you know, we all know, that it's a tussle. It's a wrestle. It goes on and on as, 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 as I put this God and that God and that God before the Lord God, and, and, and I mustn't, and I mustn't do, do that. It exposes me. The commandment exposes me. Last week, we had um, uh, no adultery. You shall not uh, commit, commit adultery. And, and again, what's your response to that? Oh, I can, I, uh, no, I haven't done that. I can take that. No, 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 that's not the response. The response is, oh my, oh my, because at a heart level, I know that's me. You shall not murder. Oh my, at a heart level, I know that's not me, especially as it's picked up and applied by the Lord Jesus. We, 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 we see that. And so the commandments, they expose us, they're uncomfortable, especially as picked up and applied by, by Jesus. But what they do is cause us to flee to Jesus. That's what they do. I, I, I read a commandment and I go, oh my, at a heart level, that I'm just exposed. But that doesn't leave me in that space. It causes me to run to Jesus, to go to him in repentance and faith, receiving forgiveness. And in him, my debt is paid. In him, my guilt is dealt with. And I stand right before Almighty God. And so two things, just to start us off. The context of the Ten Commandments is grace. The Ten Commandments also lead us to grace as they lead us to Jesus. Well, Commandment 7. No, 8. Commandment 8. You shall not steal or just not steal. What do you think? Well, in one poll, 86% of respondents said that they're com- that, 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 that they completely satisfied. They completely satisfied God's requirement of abstinence from, from stealing. Is that your, your response? You shall not steal. I can tick that one. There's other ones I haven't been able to tick. No other gods before me. Uh, I, I know I can't take that one. But this one, what at least 86% of people in this particular poll said that they could tick this commandment. Commandment 8, you shall not steal. Tick. Well, maybe that's you. <clears throat> and if you said that, I kind of understand. I kind of understand. I was thinking to myself on this, you know, I haven't even got a theft story to tell you. If you come next week, I've got a whopper of a lies, lying story to tell you. But, but uh, you'll have to come next week. I'm going to tell you. No, I, I don't even know what I'm going to say. But anyway, I might. I might next week. But this week, this week, I can't even think. I can't even. I got racking back to my childhood. And, and I'm, sure I, I'm sure I have Nick stuff. But, you know, I, I can't think of a story. I can't think of a good story. To, 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 to tell you. Nevertheless, let's take a look at what God forbids. This is the easy part. Taking a look at what God forbids, both in the, the Old Testament and, and the New Testament. What does this commandment forbid? Well, obviously, outright theft and robbery. That is, taking what doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you, you take it. God forbids, forbids that. Theft and, 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 and robbery. But you're going... I haven't done that. I haven't done that. So no, this doesn't apply to me. Next, another thing, the unlawful taking of people, uh, taking people into slavery, for, for instance, which is a bit complicated as we go through and wrestle with the cultural context in the scriptures. But there, that law is there, the taking of, of, of people, un, unlawful. There we go. We're all cool with that, I think. As, 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 as well. The next thing, uh, the use of an accurate measurements. Um, in other words, cheating or swindling. And this is a big deal. This is a big deal. In the, it comes up over and over again in the Old Testament, like in the Proverbs, over and over again. It, it is when, you know, you're selling your kilogram of, of um, potatoes and, and uh, you, you, you fix the measures and you sell instead 900 grams of, of potatoes. That's cheating somebody. That's swindling somebody. That's stealing. Do not do that. The Lord God forbids, forbids that. Or kind of related um, fraud. 
Uh, there's fraud. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't sell defective goods. Uh, knowingly sell defective goods and knowingly sell defective services to, to people. I actually have got a story, which I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, um, uh, I, I ran a little, little business uh, developing, uh, uh, delivering furniture. And so I bought myself what in South Africa is called a bucky, which means a kind of flat back um, vehicle, which, which I could, and, and attached myself to a pine furniture shop. And I got, all, I got to do all their deliveries from the pine, the pine furniture shop. But it was, you can tell by the fact that they employed me to do this, it was a very, very cheap, rough and ready pine furniture. And the thing about cheap pine furniture is that it cracks because they dry it too quickly and it, and it opens up and cracks. And the culture was this. So if you walked into the shop, it all looked great. The furniture looked great. And that's because the cracks were, 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 were covered. They were behind. And, and we were encouraged to... So when you lift it up for the, the, the client and take it to the, the customer and take it to the car and then take it into, into their, their house just to keep the cracks out of, out of the way. Well, that's, that's stealing. Don't do that. God's word forbids, forbids that. There's charging excessive interest, which again is a big deal in, in the Old Testament, which is taking advantage of, of, of desperate people. There's that person who absolutely needs some money and you've got it and you can lend it to them, but my goodness, you're going to make sure they pay a whole stack of, of extra, extra interest. That's just common in our culture, you know, loan sharks and so on and so forth. And don't do that because that's stealing. That is, is taking advantage of, of others. Another thing, cheating employees. Are you all going to feel good in this one? Uh, it, says, it, says, it says this in James. James says, look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. And, and we get that over and over again in the Old Testament. Pay people what they are due when they've done the work Pay them for the work. And if you don't do that, 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 is, that is theft. And, and, and maybe we, we, well, we're not, probably mostly not employers or, or the sort of jobs most, most of us are in are, are jobs that, you know, we get what we, we, get what we say, we're going, we get what we are told we're going to get, and that all works out. But down the ages and across the world, oh my, this is, this is going on all the time. Well, God forbids it. It is stealing. But then they're stealing employers, and maybe that is where we kind of, you know, are we still going to sign up for the 86%? Um, uh, they, they're paying us for, for, for the time we provide to do this, do this job, and, 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 and then we, we, we're on our phones, or we, we're um, doing something on our laptop that's got nothing to do, do with, with work, and, and so on and so forth. We're stealing. We're taking taking the, the time that's being paid and using it for something else, or, or pulling a sickie, doing, doing, doing that, not going to work, saying you're sick when you're not sick, really. You could be working, that's fine. And it's theft. Do not steal. God forbids. God forbids that. Uh, last thing, God forbids. Um, well, we can think of some other things, but the last thing I'm going to tell you about is, is, is cheating the authorities. It's cheating the authorities. Maybe this should feel, make us feel a little bit more uncomfortable uh, kind of evading, evading tax, uh, doing, doing that. Oh, I don't evade tax. I pay my, pay my tax. Um, but I'm perfectly happy to slide cash to somebody to avoid, to avoid um, paying VAT on, 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 on it, which is, which is theft. It's just theft. It's, it's, it's stealing for the government. It's stealing from other people who might be in competition, who, who can't be in competition because they're being undercut. In, in, in that way, and God for, forbids, forbids that. So how are you doing? How are you doing in the light of all that? Are you still in the 86%? You say, yep, this is, this is the, this is the um, commandment I keep. Well, well maybe. maybe, maybe you are. Yet you know where this is going if you've come over the last few weeks and have been following the commandments. 
For it isn't just our behavior at, at issue, but our hearts as well. And that is particularly what we see as we go through to the New Testament as this is picked up and applied by the Lord Jesus. For there is a shift. There is a shift that, that, that comes. Not only in the New Testament, it's there in the Old Testament, but we see it so spectacularly in the New Testament. And the shift is from refraining to take things, that is, don't steal, which maybe is something that we can, we can take more, more often than not, to having a spirit of generosity, that is, be generous. The shift is from don't steal to being generous. And here's an extraordinary verse, which I want you to look up. Could you go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28? And I'll tell you the page number in a moment when I can find it. It's on page 1176. 1176. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Just one verse, but it's worth looking at it because I'm going to go through it phrase by phrase. Ephesians 4, 28. The first phrase says this. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Well, there we go. We can go with that. That is commandment number eight, isn't it? You shall not steal. And, and, and here it is. Anyone who has been stealing, this person comes to Christ, becomes a Christian. So now that you become a Christian, stop stealing. Stop doing the stuff that you were doing before. No longer do it. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. First phrase. Second phrase, but must work doing something useful with their own hands. Well, that's excellence, isn't it? I reckon we can all, all agree, agree with that. So a person becomes become a Christian, right? And I've been thieving for a living. And, and, and stop doing that. Stop doing that. And instead, start, start working. Do something useful. Ah, everybody agrees with that, pretty much, pretty much. Everybody agrees with that. Third phrase is the boom phrase. The third phrase is this, that they may have something to share with those in need. And there's the shift from don't steal to be generous. Do you see how it works? Anyone who has been stealing must steal so long, no longer. Yes, and yes, I agree with that. Uh, but must work. Yes, I agree with that. And why? What is the purpose that they may have something to share with those in need? That this one-time thief can now be generous to, to, to others. Here's what Jesus said. Now go to Luke, which Miriam read for us earlier. Luke chapter 12. It's on page 1045, 1045, Luke chapter 12. And I'm just looking at verses 32 to 34, just those last three, three verses that were read, read for us. And again, three phrases. So the first phrase is, or first verse really, is verse 32, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Now, that is wonderful. So you're in Christ, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus, you have been given the kingdom, i.e. you've been given everything. It's yours in Christ. It's yours, the kingdom. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Next phrase, verse 33. Sell your possessions and give to the poor, providing purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. I think I've gone a little bit further than I wanted to. Just that first, first bit. Sell your possessions and, and give to, 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 to the poor. 
which is hyperbole because private property is assumed both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Yet what it does, what Jesus does, is he flips our thinking. That's what he does. You have been given the kingdom, you have been given everything, and, and, and so you can give. You can give. Sell your possessions and give. Give to, to, to the poor. Which leads us to the next phrase, which is the bit that I didn't mean to read but did. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, when no thief comes near and no moth destroys. That is, as you've been given the kingdom, pursue it. Pursue it. Pursue the kingdom. Do you, do you see, are you a Christian? Are you, are you identifying as a Christian person? I'm in Christ. I'm, 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 I'm in him. Uh, if you are, you've been brought into the kingdom. You've been brought into the kingdom of God. You have been given everything, but it's a, it's a now and not yet thing. We're in the kingdom, but it's not fully realized. Only will be when the Lord Jesus returns. And so what Jesus says now is pursue it. Pursue the kingdom. Pursue the kingdom of God. May, may that be front and, and, and center. Uh, do, do that. Pursue the kingdom. And then the punchline comes in verse 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be, will be also. What consumes you? What fills your mind? Where do, where do your desires take you? All this stuff, all these things that are around us. Treasure or the kingdom of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. There, there is what's set uh, against one, one, one another. Now, do you see that this is completely different to our acquiring consumer, consumerist culture. Do you see that? Do you see that what Jesus says in these three little verses and what comes before, but in these, these three little verses ending up on, that it is completely different to our culture. This is a completely different way, way of, 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 of thinking. Our culture just says, come on, consume stuff, chase off the stuff, Jesus says, chase after the kingdom. Be focused on, on, on that. This is the mindset that goes, don't just be a not thief. You see, you read the seventh, no, it's the eighth. You read the eighth commandment, and, well, 86% of people tick that box because they read it, we read it, as just being a not thief. I can do that. I can be a not thief. I can tick that box. But this mindset goes, don't just be a not thief, rather be a provider of abundance. That, that's the shift that takes place in, in what Jesus says. Don't just not take. Don't just do that. 86% of people tick that box. 86% of people say, I'm a not taker. Rather give, give. Don't just tinker with your behavior. Rather be transformed, says, 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 says Jesus. Make the shift from not stealing to being generous. It's, it's radically different to the way our culture thinks. It's radically different to the messages being boomed into us all the time. It's radically different to what we are surrounded, surrounded by as we walk through our, our days. And yet Jesus says, make that shift. Make the shift from not stealing to being generous. And here's the thing. For that we need Jesus. To make that shift we need Jesus. Indeed, what we need is the Spirit of Jesus, that is God the Holy Spirit, convicting us of our sin and convincing us of, of, of truth. If, if that's not going on amongst us, if God the Holy Spirit is not working amongst us, we are ju you're just hearing this. I'm just speaking this as law. That, that, that's, that's all it is. 
but a spiritual work has to take place. For such a radical shift, God the Spirit needs to work in us. So what we need to shift from not stealing to being generous is, is Jesus. But here's another thing. We have Jesus. We have Jesus. Indeed, we have the Spirit of Jesus. If we are in Christ, God's Spirit indwells us. He's in us, working in us, convicting us of sin, convincing us of, of truth. And so we can shift. We can change. We can move from not stealing to being generous. Not because we're going to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're going to do it from now on. But because God's Spirit is at work in, in us. To shift from not stealing to being generous, we need Jesus. But the good news is, we have Jesus. We have Jesus and the Spirit of Jesus indwelling us. And so here's a final thing. Here's a final thing. Don't just determine to be generous, which is okay up to a point because Jesus calls us to do that. And so it's, you know, yes, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But don't just do that. Don't just determine to be generous. Pray to that God would work in you to be generous. That's our prayer. To, pr to pray that God would be at work in us to make us be not takers, but givers. Not takers, but distributors. And what you pray for yourself, pray for us all, that as a body, as God's people here, we would be providers of, of abundance. That's what the gospel does. That's what God at work in our lives do. And it's not just me as an individual being a provider of abundance to others. We can be as an entire community, as God's people here, and that is what he calls us to do. Wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be great, God at work amongst us, to cause us to be generous, to be providers of abundance to, to those amongst us and, and around us. And that's what we pray that the Lord God would do in us. Let's pray together.